Hello everybody, Up Games, and uh, welcome to a new tutorial series that I'll be do wanting to do a long time, for a long time. Uh, a tutorial about neural networks uh, from scratch, so from the beginning. So uh, before we start, I just want to go through some concepts that you probably need to know. So what is a neural network, first and foremost? Uh, a neural network is a... Basically, it's a type of vector machine. I guess, and what it does is uh, let me draw all these connections. Is that uh, you have a input layer, so inputs go here, and then an output layer that outputs some things. So data in, data out. But uh, how it works is that you have these neurons and these layers, I guess. Uh, so you input data, and then it goes through all these connections that are. So these are weights, and how the weights work is that you, let's say I input a one, and the weight here is like zero point two. So the output from this connection would be one times zero point two, like that. And so if we want to calculate, let's say, this neurons. A value and let's say this weight, uh, this all these weights, this weight connects from this to here is like also 0 0.2. Let's make all of them 0 0.2. So uh, let's, I'll change the change color so you can see it a little bit better. So this weight, this weight, and this weight. So they are all going to be 0 0.2. So what would if these are all ones? Let's say all of these get ones as inputs. But let's keep it simple for now. So what would be the output of this neuron here? That neuron's output would be. Uh, uh, let's change back to white. Uh, would be one times zero point two, the first weight. Then plus. Then again, one times zero point two, the next weight. And then plus uh, the last weight, 1 times 0 0.2. Uh, and yep, that's how we do it. And after that, before you get to say that that's the final value, you're going to do an activation function. And the one we're going to use is 10h. And uh, that's because we want to, the network to be able to learn non linearly, like more than linearly separable problems. So what the tan h, tan h does, oh damn. it's kind of like this. Or what it does, it squishes the real number line between minus one and one. So any number you put in, like let's say you put in a hundred, so it comes like something like zero point nine yeah, nine something, something like that. Yeah, it squishes the real real number, line. and we get this. This kind of graph from the numbers, and that squishes the real number line and makes it non-linear because a linear would be like if we didn't activate, it would look like this basically, It'd be just a straight line. And we don't want that. We just we want the network to be able to learn more and like harder concept. Yeah. Let me erase this. And yeah. So how do we how do we do this? How do we like to this in code. So the first thing we need is a vector. And a vector is just an and an, an dimensional list of numbers. Uh, and and dimensional list of numbers. <laughs> you probably can't even read that. Uh, just what that means uh, uh, in practice is that uh, the ANS just stands for how many numbers you have. Like, if let's say we have uh, the three numbers, like here. Let's say 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and minus 1. Let's say that's our vector here. And like, how do we get all the uh, like outputs for the next layer from the inputs from this layer? Like, how do we represent these weights in code? and uh, Or like, concept in code and the how we're gonna do that is uh, with a thing called a matrix so this is a vector so 
vector and this will be a matrix and what a matrix is it's basically a two dimensional list of numbers so a list of list of numbers and because we have three Just gonna have two of these, two of these, because we have two neurons, so two lists. And how this works is that you store basically like numbers: zero point five, uh, one, and let's say zero point five, and zero point five, zero point two, let's make zero point two, one, uh, one. Let's make the one. And how do you get these players outputs? And that's uh, what you do is you uh, take all of these numbers and multiply them by this, add them like this, and then activate that, and that's your player. And for the ne for the first neuron, and for the next neuron, you're just gonna do the same for the next column, basically. And that's how you get the next layer. And then you just uh, repeat for the last layer, basically. And the another thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do, uh, add a bias. So uh, for layers, there's gonna be an input that's like just always one, and there's an extra weight associated with them. So you would add like one times the the bias. Let's see, B times like basically bias weight. Because it's one times the weight, so it's just the weight. Yeah, but yeah, that's the basics of neural networks that you need to know. I won't go deep into the actual math and how the, this stuff works. I'll link some videos on uh, YouTube on the description. Uh, some stuff where I learn these concepts and the math. But yeah, uh, let's get uh, to a Unity scene and I'll show you how to code this stuff. So yeah, first we're gonna create some scripts. So create a script folder, script, dip. yeah, and then just create a sharp script uh, and call that vector. Then open that up, and yeah. So here we have our vector class. So first, let's just delete the mono behavior. We're not gonna need that. For this case, and then we're going to be using system, I think. Yeah, and then let's make this because this uh, I'm gonna make some library, so it's gonna be a little bit more comprehensive. We're gonna use a I equip this. I equitable and then we're gonna make a, a bool public bool equals we're gonna take in a vector let's just call this other and yeah so then we are going to change if valid oh yeah <clears throat> we're going to have to create a uh, let's call it public float array called values so then if values the length is and not equals other that values that length then return false otherwise we're gonna go through all the 
values. So for i is equal to zero, i is less than values dot length i plus plus. No, for int i. So then if values that a values i is not equals to other that values i then we're going to return false also and if all that goes true we're going to return true yeah and then let's just create a constructor here so public vector public vector that's going to take in a int length and a bool randomize and that's going to be false by default so then we're going to do a for uh, values is equal to a new new int int uh, float array uh, the size of length and then for uh, if randomize For int i is equal to zero. I is less than values that length i plus plus, and then just values i is equal to a random dot range. Oh, I have to specify Unity Engine random because now I have the system inside. You need the engine the random the range <coughs> sorry about that uh, minus one f one f yeah and yeah that's enough for that and then let's make another one so public vector that's gonna take in a let's take in a float array with values and then here we're gonna say this dot values is equal to values oh move on just for like this underscore values so to lessen up the confusion so yeah this that values is equal to values and we can just take this out here out now it's fine yeah then we're gonna add some more stuff so we're gonna add a public void join a vector this is gonna make a small many things so much easier when we can just concatenate vectors easily and he's gonna take a vector that's the other vector that we want to add to this vector so then we're gonna make a float array a new values then that's gonna equal to a new float array with the size of values dot length plus other that values dot length and then for int i for int i is equal to zero i is less than values dot length i plus plus and then we're gonna just new values i is equal to values i 
and then we're gonna make another for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than other that values that length i plus plus, and then here new values values that length plus i is equal to other that values i. Now we can concatenate two vectors. We need something else. Yeah, I guess that's fine for now. Let's clean up some white space. Yeah. Okay, and, and then next we're gonna create a C sharp grid. That's gonna be called matrix, or let's let's call it layer. So it's more clear what we're doing here. Actually, my own thing I named it matrix, but I think layer is much clearer for the intended purpose. And also get rid of all the modern behavior stuff because we're not gonna use those. So. Here we're gonna have a public float array of arrays called matrix. We do an array of vectors, but this works pretty well too. Uh, we're not gonna do backpropagation at this point. We are going to add that to the uh, this library slash scripts to later. We're gonna add a uh, do backpropagation. But for now, we're gonna just do neuro, uh, genetic algorithms for the uh, neural network weights. So bear with me. Uh, so here we're gonna create a construction, a public matrix uh, layer. Public layer. It's gonna take in an input dimension int. And an int output dimension. And then this can take a string activation. We're gonna default that to 10h. Yep. Yeah. Then let's make a String called a no structure string called activation. And let's just make this a underscore activation. So activation is equal to underscore activation. And then we're gonna have a matrix. No, we're gonna have a the matrix is equals to a new load uh, what's that array of arrays and here it is gonna be output side output dimension and then we're gonna make a for loop so for for int i is equal to zero i is less than output size of dimension and i plus plus And then in here, uh, we're gonna make a matrix i equal to a new float array with the size of input size dimension plus one. And for now, we're gonna do another for loop. So for int j is equal to zero, j is a less than input size. input dimension plus one of course and then uh, j plus plus and here we're gonna initialize all our weights 
So now we have created our weight matrix here. And then now we're going to initialize. So matrix ij is equal to a random range. Uh, you can do it in many ways. I usually like to do either minus 2, float to 2, or minus 1 to 1. Let's do minus 1, minus one to 1 this time. You can change it if you want to, of course. And again. And now. We're gonna make the how do we output when we uh, put in an input vector. So let's just make a public vector that's gonna be layer output, and that's gonna take in a vector input. And what we're gonna do here now? Oh, we are going to create a new vector vector. Uh, let's call it output is equal to a, a new vector size matrix dot length and then we're going to make a for loop so for int i is equal to zero i is less than matrix dot length i plus plus Then we're going to do an error check. So we're going to do a if matrix i dot length minus minus one is equal to vector dot vector. Oh, it's output dot values. Oh, let's make make a go to the vector sc uh, script. And let's add a public int length and make it a getter. And that is going to be a values that length. I'll return that. Yeah, there we go. I'm sorry if you can't hear my washing machines quite a, kind of loud. But yeah, then here uh, we're going to check if. That is equal to vector vector the output that length. And uh, if it isn't, we're gonna draw an error. So let's just do something like debug.log. Uh, and let's make a dollar sign a string and then make some square brackets here. It's just to like Show us the error message and what the error is, and let's make put in my matrix dot length, and then let's make some other more squares, squiggly bar brackets, and add in our vector uh, output length. And right here is not the same as. Let's put this here like this. Uh, width of the yeah, matrix I length. And then minus one. So matrix column length length is is not the same as input vector length so this just we if we, if we input a wrong sized vector 
the trunk or whatnot. Show this and I just like the system that uh, exception. Let's just like cut this out. New system exception. Yeah, so if it's the input vector, yeah, so this actually should be input, not output. Yeah, if the input uh, vector is not the uh, right size, it will throw an ex exception. And if we, no, we're just gonna go through. So int j is equal to zero. Int j is zero is equal to zero. And j is a less than matrix matrix i dot length. And then j plus plus. And inside here, we're going to make a float. Weighted value. And that's going to be equal to a vector uh, input. 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 Uh, values that the values j times the matrix i j and then because we're dealing with floating point numbers the answer is sometimes null or it's like nothing and then the math uh well, you need trust and error because it's not a number and there's some kind of problem. So we're, we're going to have to do a check. So if add is not equal, if weighted value is not equal to weighted value. And this, this sum might seem counterintuitive, might seem weird. And it, I, in my opinion, it also is really weird, but if the it's not a number, if it's like a non-existent, like a non, an I n value, it's this is gonna uh, return true, and then we can uh, just make it zero. So weighted value is equal to zero. If this is true, yeah, and it's gonna say it's weird. But if this is a non-existent value, you, uh, this check will work. And then we're going to do a b, a output dot values dot uh, square brackets, and then value that i is equal to, is plus equal, plus equals to, and weighted value. And then we're going to add the bias. So outside of here, uh, output dot values dot i plus equals 1f, which is uh, the bias uh, input that's always 1, times matrix i and then matrix i uh, that length minus one and then we're going to activate so output and for this we are going to create now another script which is going to be a static script and let's just call it activations load and uh, 
Yeah, take away photo mono behavior. It's gonna be public static class. Get all rid of all these, and then let's make a public static float uh, tan h. It's gonna return a float, and it's gonna take in a float with value. Yeah, how are we gonna do tan age? We're gonna uh, do a more a different kind of activations in the, uh, the future, but for now, we're gonna just make it the tan age activated network. So, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna just return a cast float. Just we're gonna use system dot math dot tan age because they just have tan age here can be used for many different things but also for this so then we're gonna pass in the value and that is our whole activation function it's pretty neat and then here we're just gonna do a output Dot values i is equal to uh, activations tan h and let's pass in our output values i And then, after all of this, we're just gonna return output. Yay! That is a single layer in a neural network. Hello, up game short feature here. Uh, I made some mistakes. Uh, so here you're supposed to put a matrix i dot length minus one, and here I accidentally put in a output dot length. Uh, what it needs to be input dot length which we want to check and yeah I think that's it but yeah uh, at this point the episode is getting pretty long so I'm gonna stop here for today uh, next episode we're going to be building the actual network to use these layers and the vectors and everything we've done so far um, yeah leave a like if you like the video subscribe if you want to see more in the future click that bell button but yeah uh, see you next time